Um, hey everybody, um, my name is Robert, and um, so what we have going on here is, um, well okay, let me backtrack just a little bit. Like 10 years ago, this toy came out called the Mattel Mindflex. Hannah has one here. Thank you, Hannah. It's this toy, it has our EG sensors headset that goes with it, and like, um, super futuristic. Well, now it's not. Now it's like 10 years ago it came out. But when it first came out, um, I realized uh, as soon as I knew how it worked that it would, uh, you could, there must be something, there's, a, there's something in it that you could disconnect and plug it into your analog synthesizer and use it as a uh, generator for a control voltage um, so that you could uh, play your synthesizer with your mind. This is the point. It's like, it's just, it's instantly obvious if you know about analog synthesizers and you, you use that, you'd instantly be like, yes, you can do this. So in any event, um, I, I spent like a couple of months trying to figure out how to open it because it's kind of difficult to open. The Mattel doesn't want you to open their toy and figure out how it works. And then I spent, and, and then like using a multimeter, this one, I tested all the parts in it for like, it took me like two months. It was so like experimental and like detailed. I like tested every part in there just to see which one was putting out the voltage. And finally in the end, it turned out that it was the really big obvious black and red cable. That's the only cable inside the whole thing. That is the last thing I checked. And so like, um, uh, so anyway, it's really easy to open. What's the hardest thing is to open it up, but it's really easy to take these, clip a cable, add on a jack. Hold on, I have a few jacks to pass around. Uh, where's my stuff? Over here. Anyway, it's really easy to make a uh, synthesizer. Um, uh, sorry, it's really easy to turn this toy Really easy to turn this toy. BT Dubs, this is available for like, you can get it for like five to 15 or 20 bucks on eBay now. So they're really, really easy to get. And to turn it, to hack it, and to turn it into a mind controller for an analog synthesizer. It's super easy and awesome. Um, it's such an easy thing to do. Um, and I posted a video on YouTube like 10 years ago of giving instructions for this too. But the instructions are on this sheet. And on the back side of the sheet are uh, schematic diagrams for if you would like to build your own oscillator circuit. If you don't have an analog synthesizer, you can build an easy oscillator circuit and uh, and like uh, hook it up to this instead. So it's like it's pretty simple if you're good at electronics. If you're not good at electronics, it's impossible. Okay. <laughs> cool. <laughs> cool. Oh, and this was a design. I got the design from the internet from Make Magazine's website. And then it was altered by Tyler Petito at Acorn Amplifiers in uh, Atlanta. And Tyler took the guts out of this thing and, the, and he put it inside a glass head with all the wiring from this thing inside it. And then uh, and, um, um, uh, made a, and, and made a, built the circuit and put the synthesizer inside it too. And so there was the Teletron. I call this thing a Teletron when you turn it into a mind controller for your synthesizer. So my friend Tyler made a Teletron version too. It was a glass head filled with wires, like it's its brain with the flashing lights and everything. And then like it had the synthesizer inside it too. And so you'd put on the headset, you'd be looking at the head <laughs> like, like, and like thinking and, could, and you'd hear it singing back to you with these like sine waves. It was very, very cool. And so um, uh, that was a, uh, that, anyway, you can do that too. That's, a, that's something you can do. But anyway, I'm gonna show you the, how this works really fast. And then we're going to see how to open it up. I have some tools, but I don't have enough. I, I, brought, I, I like brought a soldering iron, but it's like gonna take forever. And it's like a fire hazard probably. I don't think <laughs> that we can do that here. So I see that some of you brought soldering irons and that was really, uh, that was very <laughs> diligent. Okay. And um, Robert. But I do have screwdrivers, which will be useful yeah. to be able to hack into the actual device. Hey Robert, correct yeah. me if I'm wrong. You're gifting these mind flexes to each person. Well, to, sure, yeah yeah, 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 yeah. The people who have them, you, you can take See, them home. Oh, oh yeah, because the deal is that. Like, and make oh, make friends with someone who has one if you don't have one. <laughs> yes, like every few years I'll get I don't this have itch, one. and I'll be like, I wonder if they're going for super cheap on eBay, yeah. and I look, and I'll be like, dang, they're like seven bucks, and I like buy like four. <laughs> Yeah, or something yeah. <laughs> because my goal was that I wanted to have a mind-controlled synthesizer orchestra um, and I still want to do that so if you all want to join that if you get this going then that's cool I'd like that and so uh, but to have the mind-controlled orchestra I actually have to build all of them and once I did the one and I built a second one so you can play with two um, I sort of like petered out on my ambition to like manufacture them so I've had the stack of them sitting around and accumulating for some years <laughs> and so I thought that this was the perfect opportunity to also give them away so you're making it sound really generous. Stephen. And in fact, it is, uh, 
actually just the, was, was the destiny of these things as I was hoarding them, was for me to have this Well, instead of thing. giving them to a thrift store, you're giving them to people and you're teaching them how to use it. That's true, that's true. Um, thank you. Well, I wouldn't give them to a thrift store. I would, eventually in my life, I would have built them all. Right. I believe I would. So, okay. Um, uh, in any event, um, 10, like in 2010 at the Athens Pop Fest, I had uh, figured tinkering, i have been tinkering with it all summer and I had figured it out and I got it to work. And I took it to Caledonia and was demonstrating it on the back patio of Caledonia up on the up, the go up into the little upper patio there. And like, uh, I could not get it to work and I tinkered with it and tinkered with it and finally I kind of got it to work. But it turned out that it was the synthesizer that was broken, not the, the device. And because my synthesizer is junky. So here's the deal. This thing is somewhat unstable. You're going to be hacking it and rewiring it, so it depends on your, it's possible that your soldering skills are unstable. And then on top of that, the synthesizer you're plugging it into is probably unstable. So like, so like there's all of those things that have to line up for you to be able to make it work. Cool? So like, most of the time it does work, but it doesn't always work. Um, okay, the deal is that the way the toy works is that it has a little ball. Uh, you can control the motions of a little ball with, uh, that's held on a column of air, and there's a little fan inside there that blows, and it holds this light ball up, and you control how high the ball goes, higher or lower. The, the more stimulated your brain is, the ball, the toy, the ball will go higher, and the more like mellow and zanned out you are, the ball will go lower on this column of air, cool? And so as soon as you plug it in and you hear the thing whirring, you'll realize, and you put on the, the mind, to, the, 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 the EG sensors, and you, you realize, oh, this could be a, synthesizer or something because it's uh it makes a sound of its own it has a little fan inside it that whirs so it's like it's it's pretty it's pretty easy leap to uh think that you could control a synthesizer with this thing what we're gonna do is we're gonna open it up and we're going to actually open it up i have screwdrivers but it's really hard and difficult to do so at least we'll get started that could take forever and then i have a couple that are already open max you have one oh, or george you have one and we're gonna i'll show you how to clip the one wire that you need to clip to be able to make this work and then for those of you who have these, I have a few, hit me up afterwards, and I have some quarter inch, uh, I have some quarter inch jacks that you can use that you can solder to the uh, output cable right here, okay? So I've got some quarter inch jacks here for those of you. Um, so hit me up right afterwards and I'll give you, uh, give you one, okay? Cool, Hannah Jones, I got a quarter inch jack for that. Cool, cool, okay, cool. all right. Hey Robert. Okay. Yes. Would you like to hook it up to my brain to see it perform? I would really like that very much. I think actually. you. I think you mentioned that, so we can get a. Do you, would you be the performer? An idea of what yeah. Stephen sound so Stephen's let's, thoughts sound so like. So let's do this, and then so oh, no. so okay. Yeah. So 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 what it translates to is this: when you, you you can clip this wire, plug it into your synthesizer. It's literally that easy. Literally the same wire that was driving the fan is now playing the pitch of your synthesizer. On synthesizers, on analog synthesizers, the control voltage is a, it's a basically, um, it, it's a, you plug in a plug that has a voltage, the same voltage that could be going into a lamp or anything like that. You, uh, you can plug it into your synthesizer and, and it bypasses the keyboard and runs your synthesizer with some other voltage. So you could have your synthesizer run with a photo optical sensor or you could be run, playing the pitches of the synthesizer with a, a lamp dimmer or a theremin or other sorts of things. That's the way that you bypass the keyboard and you play your synthesizer with other sorts of inputs. It's actually interesting because Robert Moog, the dude who like was one of the inventors of the synthesizer, when he first invented it, according to the documentary about him, um, that uh, he, it wasn't obvious to them when they were inventing the synthesizer that it would have a keyboard. They were thinking that the interface, the natural interface was a theremin. They were thinking when they were inventing the synthesizer that like a theremin would be the way you would play it. And it was, a, it, was, it, was a, like a, it was like a really big restriction to think about putting a keyboard that would just have individual notes. But when they thought of that, of course, they like revolutionized like music. But like, uh, it's kind of interesting to think that they might have, it might have been some just like a crazy experimental theremin type device. Well, that's exactly what you have when you try to control it with your brain anyway. So it's cool. Okay, so Stephen, what we're gonna do is, so okay, this is how this works. When Stephen puts this on, we have to, this thing calibrates. It's very, very, very delicate. You can't go too far from it. It has like a, a woman talking to you in like a robot British voice, and she's very calmly directing you, okay? So, it, but, you, but you have to ignore her directions because they don't have anything to do with using it as a hack synthesizer. But if you look at the screen there, you'll see, I mean, at the page, you'll see the instructions. You basically, you hit one, and then you wait, and you hit two. There's these two buttons and then it'll, it'll start to calibrate, and when you get a green light, it starts to play according to your brain. 
So what you're going to hear is that when Steven's brain gets more stimulated, like he's going to be all excitable because he's like that, then the pitch will go <laughs> oh, up on the me? synthesizer. And yeah. then when he calms himself down and like is really zen, the pitch will go down. And you can experiment with that and it's a really nice actually way to kind of like become aware of your brain's function. Because yeah. you don't normally think about controlling your brain directly. Right. You don't normally think, I'm making my brain more stimulated now or less so. But you can actually hear it. You can hear the level of stimulation of your brain. It's very, very cool and interesting. So anyway, like yeah, it's, a, it's really awesome. Um, I cool. drive the car, brain. I'm in charge, brain, so, not you. Th exactly. So what you do is you put this on, and we make sure it's not too tight. Okay. Cool. So you'll have to like just put it on like a headband, like you're going to play uh -huh. tennis. Okay. If it's is it tight, it it's shouldn't a, press too uncomfortably into your fine. head. It's fine. And then you take these little things and 